The world is becoming a dumber place, though. You know how you know this? You know this from signs, okay? I'll give you an example of one that I saw. I was in Tucson, Arizona, and I went down for breakfast in my hotel, and there was a sign on the toaster in this hotel that said, please butter bread <laughs> after use. If you do not know that you are meant to butter your toast after it has been toasted, you should not be allowed anywhere near a toaster unless you are taking it with you into a bath. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, right, this sign was affixed to the worst invention that mankind has ever created. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the hotel conveyor belt toaster. <laughs> no one in this entire 10,000 strong arena has ever made a decent piece of toast on the hotel conveyor belt toaster. Unfathomably sh <laughs> And handily fitted with a small window so you can witness your misery play out in slow motion. First time through. Still bread. Second time through. Barely warm. Third time through. Bumped to a crisp! There is literally no setting to get it right. It's like putting a ginger on a sunbed. It's impossible. <laughs> and there's always a queue out into the lobby because you got stuck behind some old man that thought it was a good idea to put in a bagel. <laughs> a bagel? Are you out of your mind, Grandad? If you wanted a bagel tasted in that machine in time for breakfast, it needed to go in a week ago. <laughs> By the time that's toast, you might be as well. <laughs> And then it's like they went, oh, how can we make this machine even I know, let's have your piece of crappy toast be delivered onto a little tray underneath it that we set at a slight angle so your piece of toast is sent flying straight onto the bloody floor. You see people waiting for it to pop out like fielders in the slip cordon. Oh, this is gonna be a slippery catch to take. Why is that? Well, I'm one of those psychopaths that likes to butter the bread before. <laughs> it wasn't even the worst sign that I saw. The worst sign that I saw was in the same hotel, but it was by the pool. I went down to the hotel swimming pool to have a lovely refreshing dip in the hotel swimming pool when I read a sign, ladies and gentlemen, that stopped me in my tracks and it chilled me to the core. It read like this. Would you please refrain from entering the hotel swimming pool if you have active diarrhea? <laughs> well, thank you very much for putting me off this or indeed any swimming pool ever again. Because that sign can only exist because someone did. <laughs> How is that something that we need a sign to remind us of? Don't get me wrong, I like swimming as much as the next man, but I accept that if I'm in the clutches of an attack of active diarrhea, there are certain activities that I will not be participating in for a short while. Swimming. Trampolining, <laughs> horseback riding, skydiving, probably tandem skydiving as well. <laughs> I personally am the kind of person that lives his life governed by the fear that I might one day <laughs> myself in public. <laughs> Case in point, every time I'm in a car and I do not realize that the heated seat is on, I'm like, <laughs> today's the day. <laughs> Also, more importantly, what on earth does this phrase even mean? Active diarrhea. As opposed to what? Inactive diarrhea? 
Yes, we've had diarrhea in the family for generations. <laughs> My great-grandfather traveled to India, picked up a bit of the old deli belly, but fortunately, as he got the dormant kind, none of us have ever soiled ourselves. <laughs> I can only assume that active diarrhea means it is literally coming out of your ass. <laughs> if that is the case, and for some baffling reason, you have decided that your best chance of salvation is the crowded hotel swimming pool, I don't think you're the kind of f that stops to read a sign. <laughs> oh, what's this? No running, no diving, but ah, yes, nothing about sh well, bombs away! <laughs>